surprise shone light from distant northern sky. At that point, realize I don't know where it comes from, but I know it's okay. This is something. Welcome to the Quantum Guide Show. Interviews with awakened masters as they share their quantum work with you. The Quantum Guide Show is produced by Karen Holton, creator of the Nine Steps to Quantum Health Transformation, a free nine step online course to give you the tips and resources you need to thrive. Karen lost and continues to keep off 178 pounds of surplus body weight as she made her dreams come true. Whether you are awakening to the ascension process or simply want a wiser, more efficient lifestyle, this program is for you. No strings attached. The Quantum Guide Show is brought to you in part by Zen Domes Organite, Karen's unique brand of orgone generators, ethically sourced, handmade, and double charged for maximum effect. Find out how orgone generators work and what they can do for you. Don't be fooled by imitations. Check out Karen's current selection, only available from her website, KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com and on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Quantum Health Transformation. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. Today in episode 74, I'm very happy to introduce you to my special returning guest and friend, Trevor Isley. Trevor is a teacher, messenger, master healer, and philosopher. Um, Trevor is, uh, I guess you could put what you do, Trevor, really into a basket called energy healer. Do you want to say a little bit about that to the folks? Yes. Um, we have to remember that, um, the world has told you that you can't heal, but understanding what I went through, it's body, mind, and energy healing. Basically it's a system that got put together when I was going through what seemed like a disastrous transformation with no way out. So the simplest truth that I discovered within it all is that I'm a body, I have a mind, and I do have energy. And so therefore, that's what the healing is all about. Once you get that right, the world changes, you change, everything changes. So it's a very simple way of understanding who am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I really appreciate that too. Uh, I know you've helped me a lot over the years and I, I really, really appreciate it. I got really stuck at one point mm -hmm. and that's when we initially met. I reached out to you. I had been watching your podcasts and um, and you were so helpful. And what I really like about you, Trevor, is you. there's no bullshit. You say it <laughs> how it is. You say it what you've been through, you're honest, and you're very sincere, and there's no bullshit, there's no razzmatazz, you just speak to um, your truth, which, of course, then um, helps us to be more confident in our, in our truth, because sometimes our truths aren't exactly, exactly the same. So, no, um, and why should they be? This is the thing, see, the unique design of every being on this planet has a certain gift within it and for the people that have awakened from the story which meant the human programming decided to go on holiday let's say and never return that left us with a certain amount of gifts a certain amount of awareness Every being on this planet has got that gift, even if it's that gift of beauty, even if it's the gift of love, even mm -hmm. if, if it's the gift of just even being here. And I think we've got so caught in that human program. I think the, the greatest saviour that we've really got that's going on, 
and the true sense of the word freedom is to free yourself from the human programming so you free yourself from limiting beliefs and mm -hmm. what you bring to the karen is, is unique to you authentic to you and why not this is what every being should be like completely authentic but what's going on is is that they want everyone the same in different boxes never knowing who they are what they can achieve what's their greatness what's their evolution so that's what i love about getting the information doesn't matter what it is if it mm -hmm. works for you then it may work for somebody else absolutely absolutely so there's a lot going on in the world especially uh, i say okay i say especially the last three years but a lot of people who are now being affected by the insanity of what's going on i'm just going to call it that on the earth um the truth of the matter is there has been um trouble happening on this planet for a long long time and i think it's tied in with the belief system that we have to be ruled by other people we have to be told what's right and wrong what's up and down and then of course with the um flourishing environment for science actually science is supposed to be driven by idle curiosity but instead what's happened is the funders have dictated where science will go and what it will do and so um i'm thinking that um although some people think oh these are the worst times ever no no not so much you go back in history and you can see that this is this is this kind of stuff this pattern has been going on and on and on and on. But I think right now what's happening is so many people's lives are being touched by it. What a perfect opportunity for people to wake up, recognize that there's an artificial construct, which you call programming. And I agree 100% with that term. And now it's time to look for something else because what was what we were doing wasn't working. And how do you feel about that, Trevor? It's a big question. I think the awakening was a series of events for many, many people. What was their awakening into and what for? Um, I think looking at the world now, on seeing all the things that we took so personally, mm -hmm. you know, why can't I sustain this living? Why have I lost my house? Why have I lost my bank account? Why am I losing all of these things? Considering all I wanted to do was to, to do well, mm -hmm. to do well in life. But once you start to see the process of people manipulating life and its perceptions to believe that there is an only one way life is happening and it's random. We all think that life is random. We all think the people that we meet is random. What I bring to the planet, just like yourself, it's me. I'm the creator of that. And my experience is so real. It's more real than the one I supposedly just left behind. Mm -hmm. So what we've got going on here is, is a complete enslavement of its people. It's as simple as that. Everyone's been trying to understand what does it mean to have freedom? What is the gift of that? What do you do with freedom? It's hard for people to know what they would actually do with that freedom. But what I discovered is that the greatest freedom was that human programming of self-hate, self-disillusion, the uh, unloved, all of these emotional problems that just cripple us, the mm -hmm. human being. But what I realized was is that there's a way through that, and that is part of the journey that has to happen to sort of crash. And I think that's what this world is all about. It's crashing mm -hmm. everything. And the more I awaken to my own intelligence, 
that intelligence has always given me such amazing information that the information is beautiful. Mm-hmm. So no matter who's wrong or who's right, whether it be religion or whether it be science, I, for me, I think it's all wrong, and I'll tell you for why, because I think a language that is made up by human beings will never determine what any of it means because the limitation of words and a language that we've taught ourselves will never touch base with anything that is going on out there. So therefore, they will never understand the true meaning of life because they've never truly understood the meaning of who they are. Mm -hmm. And that is where I feel is the difference. And I think the world has completely lost itself in who it is. Mm-hmm. It doesn't know who it is. And even though we feel like it's strange for us to talk in a certain way compared to how we used to speak before, mm-hmm. there's a certain enlightenment there, there's a certain spirituality there, there's a certain maturity there, there's a certain connection to what you would say is divine. It's all true. There is that connection. And one of the most important things I just want to touch base on is when it's all about healing, understanding healing, I did some over the weekend um, with, with my children, and um, it made me realize, how did I feel in the healing? And I've never thought about that before. I was always, how was it affecting somebody else? Mm-hmm. You know. But then I had to step back and think, hold up here a minute. I've missed something in the story. How was I feeling when that was actually happening? Oh, my God, Karen, it just brought a whole new different feeling. Because here's the thing. It is very difficult to explain what is happening when one is performing some healing. What happens to the body is nothing you can do, there's nothing you can take, there's nothing you can drink, there's nothing you can smoke that can emanate that feeling that what the fuck is that and what is it that is fucking shifting right through my body that I have no control over? And how does that make me feel in that way? Because when I was working with my daughter, Oh, my God, I had to stop the healing at a certain point because I thought I was going to faint because the whole body was pulsating, I mean, beyond the word hot energy Mm -hmm. in the body. Now, who is that? What, What is actually doing something that I didn't even think was possible? But understanding that there is something there that is going on, call it God, call it the angels, call it your higher self, call it any of them things. But here's the truth. That truth is the instrument that we walk around every day that we call stupid. Mm -hmm. That intelligence works within this body and is activated. In that way, when that intention is being made about what is healing. And so therefore, I think the very thing that's missing from the planet is healing. Mm -hmm. It's the only answer. It's the opposite to understanding what is the fear, but everyone wants the love, but we've got to understand the healing before we get anywhere. So, yeah, so that's um, hopefully through disasters can come great healing. Hopefully, if people are ready to go there. So this is an amazing takeover on this planet. There is an, an amazing force and, you know, understanding your realm, Karen, of there is a, a, a different realm out there. We can completely understand that who's to say 
that that realm isn't already controlling what's really going on. So there's many, many different ways, isn't there, that mm -hmm. we can see the story of what is going on. Mm -hmm. Truly amazing. Wow, for sure. I, I'm just going to share a little bit about it kind of goes with what you were saying. I hope it's not taking things off on a tangent. But one of the things is my programming as a human being was to help other people. And of course, I went to church, a lot of different churches, actually searching for truth. And um, after my spiritual awakening, though, not so much. But it's always about helping other people, doing things for other people. Be careful what you say. You might hurt someone's feelings. And what happened is I lost my awareness of my own body sensations about how, how I was feeling. And, and I know you touched on this uh, just a few minutes ago. But I realized that I was lying all the time, pretending to be something that I wasn't. So one of the big uh, things that I'm working on this year is to tell the truth. So if something's happening and I'm not comfortable with it, I can recognize that I'm not comfortable with it and I can say I'm not comfortable with it. And I could never, I, I, I would never do that before. And when I first started doing it, it felt like I was doing something terrible. But you know, I learn a lot from my kids too. And my son, he's got this saying where he says, you do you and I'll do me. So instead of us running around rescuing each other, why not rescue ourselves? And then we are come from a whole different position of strength and, and energy. And, um, and um, I got to tell you, too, what you said about the healing is really interesting. Because wh when I do healing, even on myself, my hands get extremely warm. There's like this heat energy coming out of my hands that I can't, I can't explain. So yeah, there is something operating within us. And um, regardless of what we call it, but I think really what I'm trying to say is um, a big job for me was to get in touch with how I was feeling. And then I came to sort of a conclusion, please tell me what you think of this, Trevor, where I feel like my emotions never lie. And that that's, that is how spirit communicates with me. And, 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 and helps me to have a better life, except that I had been shutting it off and ignoring it or feeling like, no, 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 I can't do it that way because my church says I shouldn't, or my mom taught me I shouldn't. A anyway, I just wondered if you have any thoughts about any of that. Oh, loads of thoughts, loads of thoughts on that, because it's, you know, what do I, what do I pick out of that uh, instantly? It's the feminine that has to relate and feel second class amongst its other species, let's say. So there's always this being overpowered by a male energy or any form of strength or control. And so therefore, we live a life of very deep-rooted programming. It's yeah. so deep-rooted that even at times when we think we've got it sorted, we kind of haven't because it's so deep-rooted. But trying to understand the idea behind Beamy is there is no identity change. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the biggest form of spirituality is to break all identity. And even mm -hmm. if today you look at a lot of the top religions that's out there, you've only got to see what they do to control women. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing out there that has ever been equal, and it never has been equal. There's always someone against a someone or someone's bigger than a someone. Mm -hmm. And we're here to sort of try to understand that and healing the emotions of the truth of the physical journey. The physical journey has the body understanding how does it feel when you go for a certain experience? How does it feel? And the body has this incredible instrument to say that's either joyous. Well, that's bloody painful. Mm -hmm. 
But once we start to understand how this body can generate just from a thought, it seems, or a phone call or an experience that can cut anyone down in a split moment. Everything is just gone or there's something about you that is just lost the will to live. Mm -hmm. And so understanding the healing for me was to understand that I just fitted into a program that I thought sucks anyway. Mm -hmm. So therefore the rebel in me or the I really don't give a fuck attitude was a big common practice for me because you, you can say that's a chip on the shoulder, but let's grow up and come forward 50 years more now. And you can see, I can still use that energy because what's actually going on out there is, is that the powers that be, they're fucking with everyone's emotions because the emotion is the biggest weapon against oneself awakening and healing was to be able to understand how the emotions are being played and how do the emotions affect the body and one of the things that i discovered is the greatest asset to surviving in this world whilst feeling like you're being protected was to be me my body my mind and my energy one unit one being, one personality, one rule. And that will always come back down, as you said, to that trust, understanding the emotional journey, and then going beyond that emotional journey, and then understanding the true meaning behind the word feeling. Because ultimately, life will be a feeling. Something will be a feeling, whether it's on this realm or another realm. And we always crave that feeling. But that is the weapon that controls humanity. And it's being played upon within our feelings. And we're here to understand them feelings. And to know that they are an incredible barometer. They are an incredible teacher. Mm -hmm. of truly understanding your up and down, your left and right, your male and your female. And two, you, you've got that vibration working just perfectly, finely tuned and balanced. But we've got a world where everyone is out of sync. Mm -hmm. Everyone's out of balance. And everybody is wobbling. Nobody knows who to trust. But I think for yourself, it's trusting oneself. As mm -hmm. for me, it's trusting oneself because I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you. But I think <laughs> we're all fed up with trusting something that is filled with lies mm -hmm. and is filled with fantasies and a lot of things in everything. And I think for us, as you say, I don't give a no-nonsense shit approach to a lot of things, you know, because it has been hard work. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that I don't come across like a guru as such, but I am a guru from the west side of this planet, let's say, that has no mm -hmm. idea what a guru actually means. So the intelligence of who we are, once that dumb programming of human being absolutely falls away, then you'll realise, as you do, the intelligent consciousness that's running this ship. Not me, not Trevor Isley. Trevor Isley will always be the destroyer of it because that's <laughs> the programming. See? Yep. So that's yep. the battle of what healing is. And that's why it's really hard for people to truly understand the truth because it is the responsibility of oneself. And that's a world that we've not been 100% capable of understanding our only true responsibility. Mm -hmm. But for me, 
whether you call it spiritual or whether it's not. I think what I love about what I know now for a series of events that just seem like there's no way out, I just can't believe the difference of transformation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, everyone on this planet, everyone on this planet is only being the programming that was shown to them, given to them, for them to operate in. And we're here to bust that shit wide open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something really amazing about doing the work. Um, like, for instance, um, you know, there's the dark night of the soul, but there's also the hero's journey. And the hero's journey always includes a segment of the dark night of the soul. And, and, and for me, it actually repeats um, on different levels throughout time. And I finally, um, now when it's happening and I'm feeling like, you know, it's, I'm back, back in the dark night of the soul, as I do from time to time, I kind of go, ah, oh, yeah, I've been here before. And look at what happened before, uh, all the gifts I got from the work that I did. And I just be really patient with the process. And I find that, um, that that really helps. So, and the other thing too is when I'm in the dark night of the soul, I'm able to deal with um, thought patterns and and energies and stuff that I don't necessarily um, uh, perceive when I'm on top of the world. And so it's quite amazing. You're right. It's like the training is there for everybody and all the time. And but it, it, but there's a shift that has to happen where where we go inside instead of looking to all these people that tell us, oh, take this vitamin or or go to this church or, or vote for this political candidate. You know, I don't I don't worry about any of that anymore. I got to tell you, it's a huge, huge relief. And also, I know that I've got my own back. I can depend on me. And I got to tell you, it's it's so freeing. It's just so freeing. Anyway, just um, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to ramble on too much here. No, no, no. Don't apologize for that. <laughs> um, but that's that's the truth of it. It's about believing in oneself. It's about believing in one's own heart. Believing in in one's own soul, one own spirit. Mm -hmm. to the world has got us to believe that we're not capable of something whether it be a miracle of healing for instance it's it's still taboo in certain countries or forbidden for anyone to know how to understand does healing actually work mm -hmm. can miracles actually be performed and um well, I've got to say, yeah, because there's no other way. I can't not say it any other way because it's, it's been my experience. And I spoke about this earlier on to someone about, you know, if you believe in the world of spirit and you 100% know someone's either standing next to you or, or in front of you or someone's guiding you or anything that goes on the outside of the periphery of the five sense realm, we kind of think we're mad and you think, oh my God, is does it absolute? Does this exist or not? Because this is driving me around a fucking bend. So that's the biggest question on the planet. It's it's unanswerable. Yeah, it is to many, but it's not for me. It's not unanswerable. It's a, it's a, it's a surrounding yes. There is no what if or maybe it's fucking possible. No, I know it to be so. And I think this is the thing. Once people start to understand that, what comfort would that give to them? But again, it's not that comfort. Once someone understands and fully, truly believes 100% that he knows he's not going to die, its whole perception has to change. It has to. It can't experience such things like that and still be the same as you once was it doesn't work 
So the dark night of the soul is that battle that something's emerging but the old subconscious program and is still wanting to drag you back in. And of course, mm-hmm. as you start growing as a being and the more aware you become, the more light you become, the, the more you start to see how, de- how demonic the human program actually has in the ways that it clutches you very strongly. And so, therefore, what people have never experienced in their life, especially in the form of freedom, is how to release oneself from the clutches of that darkness that says it as simple as this. Well, how the fuck am I going to cope? Am I getting out of this? Well, what do I do now then? You know, them, them great questions of like... Fuck, I feel completely lost. Mm. And I don't know where this is going or where this is heading. But I think that responsibility, what you spoke about, that innate self, that divine self, that God within, that chemical, the star being dust that created every single thing in this body, which is what I love. I love the stardust. I can go with that all day long. Stardust beings. But what we're trying to understand here is is to beat these human fears. And as I said, just as for being a woman, there's an undercurrent there that you have to um, impress a man. And sometimes um, you kind of need to step back and go, what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck's going on? Why am I doing that? See, even just that in its programming Mm -hmm. is very, very difficult to understand. But we're on it. But it's a slow one. But I think the more, especially, the women claim back the divine gift, I don't think nothing's ever going to change on this planet unless that happens. Mm -hmm. It's needed. Yep. I would agree with you 100%. Um, so today we're going to talk a bit about, uh, some of the beautiful work that you've done with wands and with crystals and things. Um, do you, do you feel it's time for us to sort of slip into that? Do you want to show us some of your amazing work? I'm so delighted you're going to share that with us. Well, again, it's a story. Everything that we, we kind of do, there must, there must be some form of a story. Now. When the mind wants something, it'll make sure that you get it some some one way or another. So imagine I'm sort of walking past this woodworker's joinery tool place. And I thought, well, I'll go in there and have a look. And in there, I saw this pen knife, and it was called a Whitlin Jack, Mm -hmm. right? But my brain immediately went, I want that. But the other side of me, I go, what do you want that for? That's a lot of money for a, a knife that you may not never use. And I've always worked on that. I thought, right, my main, my mind is immediately said, I want that. So I'm going to have it. I don't know why. So it worked out that there was a deep rooted feeling within me that when I used to watch the old movies and watch people in Tennessee or you know, some part, and always in America, and occasionally Australia, but mainly on verandas in America, you know, vast land. And the old man will be sitting there sharpening away a stick. And I always intrigued me why? What the, what is that? So I felt the energy of that. And so therefore I started just getting sticks and just doing that. But it was the connection that I'd never felt ever. And again, life is all about feelings. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, coming from the world of fashion, for me to have a piece of wood, it just wouldn't work. It just doesn't work for me. But the most important ingredients I discovered through holding, meditating, being one with the wood, 
and not knowing what I was going to create from it, I thought was astounding. Because this is almost as if the wood was telling me what it kind of wanted. So wood and crystal, for me, have become the ultimate um, pure creation. Not man-made in the fact that, you know, no one man-made a tree and no one could man make these crystals even though we've got of course the copy side of it but the original side of it all mm -hmm. and i just couldn't believe its properties and so therefore i would start off i thought well I'd, so it took me through different guides and so therefore if i was, like if we look at that one there you know it's you can see that it's got a merlin type yes, of energy beautiful. it's got my my signs and symbols and the pose, you know, but I've never done one before. Oh, oh, where are you gone? Did you lose me? Oh, hold up a minute. <laughs> Bear with me. Oh, I thought I lost you then. So that's that. So that was in my, in my wizardry days. Mm -hmm. So there's a big connection to the wizardry. There's a lot to do with the healing energy of a man so in my early process of um, understanding spiritual guides and stuff like that they were very much a big influence for me at that particular time especially with herbs and especially getting into the the bird world understanding the you're not just looking at a bird there's amazing intelligence there which then this is my first out i mean they're not brilliant but what it is, is something that I've never yeah, done before. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but it, they are something brilliant. I've never done before. So this was the first owl one. Oh, it's beautiful. And is that clear quartz on top? Yeah, she's a beaut on the top mm -hmm. there. Camera mm -hmm. won't check in. But again, representation of the owl, which is all about wisdom. Wisdom, yeah. So I've got yeah. the wizardry. Yeah, I've got the wizardry. And then again, just quickly going through it, it was, what could I do that I've never done before? So could I do a bear? I don't know. But again, this was connecting me into the animal world again. So I started um, carving snakes, and cats, and then I, I did this little, that's my first oh, little bear. That's beautiful. But someone that's never done a bear before, I mean, I couldn't even draw like that on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So that became a massive thing with the carving. But it was the connection. And I think it became very, a great form of meditation. Because what it is, it's a distraction. So even though I was creating these wands, and not sure of why. What they was doing to me was bringing me into the, the, the earth, the real substance of the earth, too airy fairy, too way out over there at that particular time. So the, the ones totally grounded me. And so therefore in that instance, I totally fell in love with its surroundings. So I fell in love with the wood that I transformed a, an old piece of wood and I carved it and made it feel beautiful again, which then sort of led me down. All of a sudden, there's a great big influence with Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden. Oh, my gosh, you carved that, Trevor? Well, no, this is, this is a cast. No, no, I did not sit there and cast that, but all the rest of it has, has been cast and added to it. I'm not that mm -hmm. good. But it was the energy of it. So mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a case in the story that went, right, well, that comes your, why is it Egyptian now? And, mm -hmm. of course, the, the Egyptian moment was teaching me about the underworld. Mm -hmm. No the instructions to the underworld. And for me, it represented a lot to do with the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's where I found myself in that place. And then as we kind of move on, just different apps, then we've got what you would say is the Mary Magdalene energy, right? So you've got, again, just, just 
can't really see that focused in oh it's too. absolutely beautiful she is a beaut but it's the yep. feeling of them all as you know mm -hmm. so magdamarian uh, magdamarian <laughs> um that kind of energy comes in so it sort of says to me okay what's going on there well some of the ones were obviously on a, a masculine energy so when mary energy started to come in that was the that was a feminine aspect mm -hmm. so i could feel the femininity in the wand and then when we sort of go up into say like this little one again it's just oh, i don't think these cameras are picking up too great but again we're now working more earthly mm -hmm. into the wands and my main source of my crystals is is always really around about uh quartz crystal it really is my favorite mm -hmm. because the thing that i've done with this with feeling is, is just ridiculous this is the first one that's just been made this is the uh in a transformation this is my initials which is ti obviously looks like a cross because it's my initials but this is the first mm -hmm. if we can just sort of see that there yeah beautiful so again a lot more energy on that then again, this was going into the the little Merlin, little quirky sort of things. But again, just love this energy of holding that. And then just quickly, another energy that came in that took me on it. And remember, they're just pieces of wood and crystals at the end of it. But what's the message? Why? What's going on? And this one, never done one before, but this was um templar knights mm -hmm. so i had no idea that i was going to oh, be doing and what is the stone that is the blood let me get that absolutely that is the bloodstone yes bloodstone beautiful right there bloodstone mm -hmm. crystal wand as you know is courage and grinding stone but it was this character mm -hmm. now, i'm not brilliant at what it is but again this was a story that these certain people, these certain knights that believed in something. So when I kind of look at how the ones have come about, they do tell a story. And I think when people sort of buy the ones, the immediate reaction is, is oh my God, if, you know, it's better than the picture. Well, it's going to be better than the picture because now you've got... you got the, the energy. Very, you've got the very thing in your hand. Yeah. And I was teaching the my grandchildren one's two uh one is five and one is nine and one is seven so i had a good little family day with them and i was teaching them about the healing and i was showing them how to use the crystals and could they feel the energy of the crystals and it was so amazing to sort of think that's all it takes Mm -hmm. you're just you're just introducing to the youngsters that this this stuff's great and um they wanted to try it and um i made the the little and the seven-year-old one his own special healing one so now he he believes he's got the the magic to heal sort of thing but the truth of it is we do but mm -hmm. we don't need something to do that but the one is an extension They've been yes. known throughout history, whether it's a, a staff or a pointing stick or a shepherd's crook or a, a bishop or a cardinal's, um, whether it's staff. Mm -hmm. They've always been around. Mm -hmm. But I think with the healing abilities with them all, connecting with wood and stone, I think it's such a beautiful combination. Oh, of, yeah. Oh, it, it, it swirling atoms of empty space that is never colliding in any form, but something in itself creates a form of matter to understand what it is that you're holding. But going beyond that, and you just know that you're just holding a piece of life mm -hmm. that has been created over who knows who knows and that's what i find 
incredible. People should have a wand. You know, mm -hmm. it's, we're working on the, oh, look, you might like this. This is working with the Elantian energy. Oh, yes. I sure do like that one. Mm -hmm. She is gorgeous. So kind of nicknamed that one the Elantian goddess of the sea, obviously, because it's representing the, the trident there. But we've yes. got the aqua, um, aqua aura crystal ball. And then we've got obviously the, the seashells, bring it all into to being really um, quite raw. But again, big, massive Cypria energies, again, that comes from that. You know, the Mediterranean, the, the goddess, the warrior energy of um, fluid emotions mm -hmm. that we call water. And so, therefore, you know, it wasn't an interest there. Again, it's a cast, but all hand painted to mm -hmm. bring it alive. But again, it's when you hold something like that, you know, it's, as you know, Karen, it's the energy mm -hmm. that it gives off, mm -hmm. which I used to think was rubbish. But the things I've done with them, I tell you. I can't say they're rubbish because they're absolutely beautiful. I'm absolutely gutted that when I leave this planet, I actually can't take them with me. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. It totally does. It totally does. I use uh, I use a couple of different kinds of wands. One uh, that I have is all crystal. It's got a clear uh, quartz angel, and then it's got the rose quartz for the shaft, and then it's got a little... Um, clear quartz point on it and I have a line of orgon generators and what I have done from the very beginning is I do uh, I use my wand to create a quantum entanglement where on an energetic level every orgon generator and crystal that I have is linked so when I get new orgone generators in or I or I um, or crystals, I link them too. And so in in what my intention is, because intention is sort of steers the ship. Um, my intention is when they go out into the world, they go into, you know, Australia and they go up to Alaska and they go down into the South uh, United States or England or wherever they go, they're actually still connected energetically and that causes um or forms sort of a grid pattern on the earth but it also um, um helps them to be stronger and more powerful in, in what they do so I, I you know a lot of people are pretty crazy about crystals because they're naturally attracted to them and they may or may not be sensitive to the energy that they produce but every crystal produces its own signature. And when they're in combination with each other, they're then producing an inaudible symphony of healing energy. And they're mm. everywhere. And as you showed with, with your one of the last ones, you showed the um, seashells. Seashells do the same thing. It, yeah. it, they create energy. Um, but the other thing I just want to tell you about um, orgon generators is they're in. I'll just show you. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at one. I'll just show you this. This one here is um, just a disc and you can hold it. And it's just lovely to, to rub on the body. It's got an amplifying um, um, spiral copper on either side. But what happens is this is not plastic and this is not glass. What this is, is the a resin was created out of microscopic bits of crystal. So it, essentially it's all crystal. But when the resin cures, it, it shrinks and it puts pressure on the crystals and the crystals become what they call piezoelectric. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Wilhelm Reich, but he... Um, Basically, him and Einstein and a bunch of his other friends, they got together and they um, discovered this orgon energy, which is another form of healing, healing energy. But it wasn't until the 60s or 70s or even 80s that people were able to make this resin. It's called organic resin. And then that puts pressure on the crystals and they draw energy from zero point. So this takes us even into the realm of quantum uh, mechanics 
So it pulls undifferentiated um, energy uh, um, and it combines with the crystals. And then this is emitting um, frequencies. And so these are lovely to sleep with because they have no sharp edges and um, they're just really comfortable to, to hold in your hand. I started with these because I was very aware of my sensitivity to electromagnetic frequencies. And these, they don't block it, but they retune it. So they're constantly taking in the energy from the environment, retuning it and sending it back out into um, healing frequencies. I actually sit on one. This one is hematite. Hematite is so amazing for absorbing pain, absorbing um, uh, electromagnetic frequencies. And it's just so good. It just feels so good to have it near your body. Yeah. So I don't want to take away from what you do, but no, I just that's nice. It's nice. You had show some you triangular couple. shaped ones as well, didn't you? Um, well, I have pyramids. This oh, that's it, pyramids. Yeah, pyramid. And the symbols um, add intention. On the back, there's a, an amplifying spiral, but this one is pure shungite. So this one is really good for just absorbing all those electromagnetic frequencies, purifying them. But I got to tell you, one of my favorites is quartz and quartz, yeah. whether whether it's rose quartz or citrine or clear quartz or amethyst, they're the most powerful of all, all the symbols. This here is a, a little disc that I recommend people, they just can keep them in their pocket or mm. they can even take them in the bath and that influences the bath water. This one has shungite on one side and it has clear quartz on the back with an amplifying oh, spiral. Yeah, that looks cool. I like the, that. I got a, I've got a, a green screen, so it's, I, it's kind yep. of... But anyway, okay. so, so I have all kinds yeah, of shapes and, and sizes. And um, this one here is actually a clear quartz that's been dyed to this beautiful blue because it's one of my favorite colors. Yeah, that is a beautiful and, color. Essentially, uh, what they do besides um, take in environmental energies and purify them, but they also have healing qualities qualities as well. So I use those in my energy healing quite a bit. Um, yeah. I've, I, my pendant is amethyst. It's an organ generator. So basically, they're under crystals under pressure. They become piezoelectric, and then they pull yes. this amazing... Um, and not not uh, really well understood orgone energy that has amazing healing uh, capabilities as well. Mm. So I, I just wanted to show you a few a few of my another way that we can use crystals. So um, um, but I, I link them all with a wand. And oh yeah, I just want to show you this. This is a this is one of my little ones. It's not near as nice as what you do, Trevor. Your your work is beautiful. <laughs> Stop <putting> yourself... <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm Stop just saying. Yourself, that I damn woman. <laughs> I'm being I'm being honest. So it's no, got an amplifying spiral. It pulls the energy in. It passes through. This is black uh, tourmaline. Is that all the way through? Is that gone all the way through? That spiral? yeah. And this is black tourmaline and um and oh, to slip my my mind uh, uh selenite and then it, right. there's metal on the tip so basically the energy goes in here travels That's through amazing. gets recharged cleansed and then comes out and i, I use this I for everything that. from doing reflexology on my feet to just just wanding myself to improve yeah. and increase you know my body's uh, my body's energy yeah. So there's so many ways and uh, of getting better that have nothing to do with the medical industry and, um, and um, you know, energy healing. What I really love about it, Trevor, is that it does no harm. It never does no. any harm. No, that's right. It's, um, mm -hmm. again, it's, um, you know, a little while ago, I was going through a few things and I thought, oh, shit, now what, you know? What now? What you know? Why is mm. your foot hurting all of a sudden? Go to bed on a Monday, it's all right. Wake up on a Tuesday, can't walk on your foot. And my energy is like, oh, now what the fuck? You know. Mm -hmm. But um, and it took me a while to sort of get to understand it. But the interesting thing is, is this: you think, oh no, is this it now? Am I? Is it? Have I just 
developed a limp. And um, I could go to the doctors and they would say it was something. So I was looking it up. Yeah, there is a something. It's called a long name. I'm not even going to pronounce it because I probably say it wrong. But there is, yeah, it's something. Happens as you get older and it can happen through loads and loads of things. And I thought, no, I'm not having that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not buying that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not having that. You can call it whatever you fucking like, but it's not what I've known it to be. Considering I just went to bed and woke up with it, so something else is going on. So, when you understand and you do, when you sort of get beyond again, it's like there's your intelligence right there that immediately says, "Okay, let's find out why this is happening," mm -hmm. and then communicating with the body and sort of trying to get a mental picture or energy or information of why it's happening. And I just find it fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a certain things that was going on, and I was like, oh, right, here we go. Okay, well, let's put it to the test then. So there was a little, little process a little while back, and I thought, fuck me, I've never been to the doctors, but it looks like I've now got a list, mm -hmm. you know, felt like that. Anyway, cutting the story short, I haven't got that list now. I won't be going and seeing the doctors at all because none of them bits and pieces exist to what I had that was seemingly very worrying at the time. And I think that is a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that in itself is a miracle. The miracle is actually believing it. That's before the miracle has even been done. Mm -hmm. But to sort of believe that that miracle can happen, that's the miracle in itself that becomes so natural that it's not really even a, a miracle anymore mm -hmm. because it's something that has just become so, well, natural, so beautiful natural, to do. Yeah. So, so that, so, yeah, all the, you know, the argon, and I do love them. I love that little black. Yeah, I, I'm imagining that. That feels. I'd have walked that around in my pocket all day long. I would. Oh, I I love touching them and 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 yeah. I use them. I use them all the time. And yeah. I never go see the doctor because I don't believe in their system. I don't believe in it no. anymore, um, because I believe that the symptoms we're having is my healing process. And if I stop the symptom by taking a tablet, I've stopped my own healing process. Yeah. And, and, and like what you said, there's, there's things going on. Um, you know, um, who knows why sometimes uh, a, a physical symptom will be to prevent us from doing something that maybe is not in our best interest. Maybe yeah. it's just to get us in touch with, Hey, I got to love my body and take better care of it. Yeah. It could be all kinds of messages, but if we're not yeah. listening or run to the doctor, and then again, the doctor doesn't know more about my health than I do. He may know wow. stuff about biology, but he doesn't know about my health. I got to tell you one quick thing that happened to me just to illustrate I had some lumps under my arm and I went to the doctor and they sent me for tests and the doctor called me in and said, Karen, you've got cancer. We want to schedule right away for surgery, chemotherapy. There'll probably be radiation. I said, stop. You're scaring the hell out of me. She mm. says, well, I didn't mean to scare you, but we got to get on this right away. I thanked her very much. I left and I never went back. And I just floated it out there that I had cancer and I didn't have cancer and I didn't choose which way it would tip. And mm. what I did do was I started really going inside and I had, I just got this spontaneous knowing to go for long walks every day and to avoid certain foods and to meditate more. Three months later, I did go see the surgeon and he said, you have no symptoms. There's nothing to operate on. You're perfectly mm. healthy. And I went, yes. Now, what would have happened if I had gone the other route, Trevor? Right? That's the exact notion. That is that is it. See, there is no other route. But, you know, for people like ourselves that had this strange anomaly to sort of think that, there's something in you that says, oh, you know, we can heal that. That in itself is madness, right? Mm -hmm. But once you, as you've understood, you know, it's the first time 
we've ever committed ourselves to actually giving the body a command. Mm-hmm. You know, we just blame it when it breaks down. Mm-hmm. And we take no thought of it of our own. It's as if it's done it all by itself, you know. But there is a moment in that, you know, that the, the fear comes. It's like, well, you've got the cancer. There's a possibility you're going to die if we don't do something about it. But, you know, I think for people like me, maybe like yourself, it starts saying, well, if you're going to take the motorway journey, you might make it, you might not. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always that, you know, I go and see the kids and say, see you when I get here. And, you know, I hope you don't. You know, some people take that little two hour journey on the motorway, won't go on, won't get on. Kids won't see their dads or their mum won't see their kids, whatever be the story. And I think mm-hmm. once something like that happens to a being, we have two ways in reacting to that situation. It's, it's, oh, no, my life is over. But I think for people like us that have that deep understanding that there is something else, it doesn't scare us so much. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, when it happened to me, same story as yours, it was that moment that went, <sighs> okay. Makes sense to me, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't really need to be here anymore. And I think sometimes that's a great attitude of not wanting to sort of be here because it does take that fear of death away. Mm-hmm. But I also realized as well, and here's the thing if anybody's really trying to understand something, is two things. When it's battling cancer, well, there's a problem with both of them words because battling you'll kind of never win. The battle you won't win. Mm-hmm. And then you've got cancer. Now, your body's intelligence has no idea of what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Has no idea. Again, mm-hmm. because we're using a word that's created by human beings to say, that's what you've got. It's, it's called it. We've called it cancer. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, so you can't heal cancer, but you can heal the amount of stress one's been carrying over the years through disillusionment mm-hmm. or just complete upset and failure and emotional problems that never seem to get resolved. And then the body crashes and we. We kind of call that almost like a cancer. Mm-hmm. But but same as what you've done. See, that's the gift right there. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter what we believe in. There is that moment that when, do you know what? I believe in myself. Mm-hmm. I got my own back. And that yeah. gives me a, a security. I've got this inner security I, I didn't have before discovering this. And it just sees me through. So no matter what happens, it's kind of like, okay, that's happening. And what do I want to do? Oh, I want to go have a bath. I want to go and have some delicious salad. I want to do this. I want to do that. I just take care of myself and everything else takes care of itself. Uh, So much of what we perceive as reality isn't even real. And it's the mind that convinces us that it's real but i don't think it is real so you know what no. trevor I, i'm sorry but our time is running out very quickly please do okay. uh, respond as you as you like and then tell people where they can reach you and of course the all the contact information will be in the description below the video but please go ahead yep um people know me on my youtube channel which is trevor Osling. I offer one-to-one meetings, uh, teaching and understanding what is going on. With the ones, they're on a friend's um, Etsy site. So I'll I'll give you the link, Karen, and then you can sort of put that up. Um, But it's Sacred and Magical Ones. And um, on there, there's untold ones of all different themes and styles. But the most important thing about them all is it's connecting in with something mm-hmm. that enables us to 
understand our own intelligence. And I think that's what it is. I think that's that's the ultimate that we've been led to believe that we're unintelligent unless you went to Harvard. Hmm. But for people like me that have kind of got it, that intelligence that I know is not in books. It's a completely it's different not. intelligence. It's not. Yeah. It, it's, it's the beautiful flowers that grow out of the shit and the shit being, you know, the dark night of the soul. Absolutely. And, um, and once we found that and discovered our truth, oh, man, it just takes so so much stress out of the, out of our lives so that we end up just spending morning till night doing what you know what what we want to do to take good care of us and it's so important yeah. and we're worried if it. we're not doing anything it's just a it's, it's just well there's nothing else there that's going on so for me even if i'm not doing something that's you know the opposite to that is is a real peacefulness mm-hmm. you know because we've spent our whole lives trying to do something but that healing is a beautiful feeling when it's when i don't have to do anything Mm -hmm. but the problem with a lot of people is this they can't sit in silence because in that world of the human there is no such thing called silence Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. the difference between that human world and the other world, but in that silence, it's not because there's nothing going on. In that silence is literally all, all the information I need to know. It's yeah. true. It yeah. is true. What others have said before, there is a something, no matter what you call it, there is a something. And that something can be connected to. Absolutely. Well, Trevor, as always, such a pleasure to have you on the Quantum Guide Show. Thank you so much for sparing the time. And thank you too to the viewers. Much love to you and and much joy and much success. Please do check out Trevor's um, links that will be in the description below. And we'll see you next week on the Quantum Guide Show. Bye-bye.